Well, as you, you see as we uh, prepare for communion in, in different days here uh, with the, the COVID uh, going on, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's a different type of church. As they prepare and, and, and try to do things differently, and uh, uh, we've not gone to extremes here, uh, but uh, tried to, to take care in, in preparing it in, in a safe uh, uh, manner and uh, try to distribute it and such. So, but uh, communion is, is a personal time. It's a, a time for, for you to, to do some uh, uh, considering thinking about uh, you know, what is going on. So we're going to talk about that. Uh, communion is, is uh, a practice in, the, in this church as, as an open communion that uh, allows for anybody who has uh, become a Christian and a believer and uh, given, given their, their heart and their life to Christ, accepted His grace, uh, receiving His forgiveness, and then follow through with, with believer's baptism, being baptized as a Christian, uh, uh, invite you to, to uh, partake of it. And now, we don't do background checks here. Uh, we, 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 we don't find out who has or, or who's old enough or anything like that. We don't slap it out of the hands when they accidentally take it. Uh, uh, but but th that is who it's designed for. And uh, a matter of fact, it's part of me realizing as a child that there was something missing in my life that, that uh, I hadn't gone through. I grew, grew up in church, knew all about it, uh, but, but uh, it was one of those things that, that uh, uh, I noticed that, hey, there's, there's a difference uh, between me and everyone else here, because uh, 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 communion's not yet for me. I, I wasn't ready for it, so, so that was one of the talking points of what, uh, what got me started thinking and, and wondering about it. So, so we're going to look at, at it this morning and, and look at different aspects of, of what communion is, and, and I invite you to, to consider that. But uh, it is, is your choice uh, as far as, as taking it. If, if you feel you're ready for it, uh, uh, Scripture uh, talks about being prepared for it. You know, uh, just, just like uh, giving your offering, and we don't remind you of that every, every time we have an offering, uh, and, and should remind you that uh, you know if you're not ready to give your offering, uh, uh, don't. If, if you harboring a grudge against somebody, uh, uh, Jesus, uh, the scripture declares that, you know, go, uh, make amends with that brother, make amends with that person, uh, uh, leave, leave your offering, to, uh, go take care of it, and then take care, care of your offering, and uh, uh, Eric says, please come back and take care of your offering, right? the, the lights have to stay on, right, but, but uh, there, there are uh, matters of more importance. In, in, in matters of the offering, you, you got to be in the, the, the right spirit. you gotta, you got to get your heart right with God, with others. Uh, the Lord's Supper is a very important time. But if you're not ready, if, if your heart's not ready to receive it, uh, if you need to, to do some work, do, do some uh, uh, praying, talking to God, um, it's a time of reflection. Maybe maybe you're not ready. But also in these days, if... if uh, uh, there's, there's people in the streets. I won't take a poll here, but there are some people who have not been out to eat, uh, haven't been to a restaurant, haven't even gone through a drive-thru uh, with, with things that started. I'm still amazed. I still have people that come in Walmart and says, what do I do? This is the first time I have not been to Walmart since March. I don't know how you live like that. But uh, uh, anyway, uh, and then there's other people that are there three, four times a day while I'm there at Walmart. So different dimensions. But yes, it, it is uh, uh, completely up to you. We're told to observe the Lord's communion. Uh, we're, we're, we're told to, to uh, uh, remember uh, what Christ has done for us. And so uh, uh, Scripture uh, uh, shares the importance of it. Uh, now just as, as Scripture reminds us, we're not to forsake the assembly together uh, uh, yeah. as we get together. Uh, well, uh, we're, we're concentrating. Most of our time will be spent in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. But uh, I find this... Uh, uh, thoughts on, on what's going on, what's behind communion uh, throughout the Bible, beginning in Genesis, uh, uh, the idea of, of, of God delivering his people uh, uh, is on on throughout the uh, uh, Old Testament. So uh, I in, invite you to understand that, that this covers all of, of Scripture there. Uh, matter of fact, it, it's from the very beginning when, when man is created in the image of God and designed to have a relationship with God. And, and yet that relationship was broken by sin, by, by our choice to, to be disobedient, or by our choice to want more than, than what God had given us. Isn't it amazing that we always want more? We're, we're not satisfied. 
But but at this point, uh, uh, the communion uh, was was uh, uh, that they were uh, partaking of. Uh, they come together to uh, to commemorate the Passover. If you remember from from the, the Old Testament, Passover that that time when when the Jewish people were, were rescued. So each year they, they celebrate that. And so on the night before the Lord's death, uh, uh, our, our Lord Jesus, you know, he, he gathered uh, uh, with his disciples in the upper room to eat the Passover meal. And, and every year Jewish people would meet together and celebrate this Passover special meal uh, just to, to commemorate the deliverance of, of God's people. Uh, uh, what God had done for the people of Israel as they delivered them from Egypt. Now, Israel had been in, in slavery, in, in bondage to Egypt for, for over 400 years. And here God delivered them and uh, brought them out of the, the, the land of Canaan. And uh, after a series of plagues here, and, and this is after the last and, and final plague, and, and the children of Israel protected themselves from, from the uh, angel of death that would pass by to take the firstborn. Uh, and and uh, did so by applying the, the blood to the doorpost and, and uh, to the uh, lentils of other houses there. And they were to, uh, uh, then to, to eat this roasted lamb along with some unleavened bread and, and uh, bitter herbs and, and as a Passover meal. And so uh, uh, this continued on as a remembrance of, of what God had done. How God had taken, how God had provided for, for them and and release them from the bondage that they were in to Egypt. So, so this was a celebration that continues. Uh, you know that Passover continues today. It continues to be celebrated by, by the Jewish people. Tragically, though, uh, what they miss is, is that when Jesus shared this meal with them, he began a new memorial of what Christ did as Jesus delivered people from the bondage of sin. See, they were, they were released from the bondage of slavery to Egypt, but, but when Christ came in, and, and when Christ shed his blood, it was for the deliverance of sin. You can, you can turn back to Luke chapter 22, verse 19. I, I sent you to 1 Corinthians, didn't I? But in, in uh, Luke chapter 19. I'm sorry, Luke chapter 22, verse 19. And uh, you have them preparing for the Passover. And as they prepare, then uh, uh, Christ is, is sharing that uh, this, this new uh, meal with them, which, which becomes the Lord's Supper. They've gathered together, they prepare, they're, they're ready for the Passover meal. You see them preparing for that, uh, verse 7, chapter 22. They came the first day of unleavened bread, which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. And Jesus sent Peter and John, saying, verse 8, go, go and prepare the Passover for us that we may eat it. And they said to him, where do you want us to prepare it? And he shared with them the details. And, and uh, well, we are going to meet a man with a pitcher of water and uh, fall into the house. And uh, uh, so, so anyway, all that is set up, it's prepared. And then as they have it, you find it is, it is different. Because Christ has taken the Passover meal, and not only now is it just a, the, the uh, uh, release from slavery to Egypt, but now it's the release of slavery to the bondage of sin. So you find that, in, we'll, we'll, we'll start with verse 14. When the, the hour had come, he reclined at the table and the apostles with him. And he said to them, I have earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say to you, I shall never again eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And when he had taken a cup and given thanks, he said, take this and, and give thanks. Take this and, and share it among yourselves. For I say to you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine from now until the kingdom of God comes. And when he had taken his bread uh, and given thanks, he broke it and gave, gave it to them and said, this is my body which is given to you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took the cup after which they had eaten, saying, This cup which is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. Uh, so uh, then he goes on to, to speak of one betrayal uh, and, and all that is about to happen. So now we have a new covenant. And this new covenant that, that they have is for the forgiveness of sin 
because of not the slaughter of a lamb, but because of Christ, their Lord, the Master here, who's going to be crucified to cover the sins of all mankind who accept what Christ has done for them. So it's a, a miraculous deliverance from sin. Now it's it was delivered from slavery. So we remember the deliverance the Jewish people have received, but but now it's deliverance from sin. And Jesus' disciples watched and, and they listened to his words and and they understand the historical significance of it back then. But 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 they're going to have trouble understanding what's going to happen. They they understand what is needed and, and Christ has preached. He's, he's shared this. He's, he's taught them. But yet, comprehending it, well, that's one of the problems we have, is uh, accepting, comprehending, understanding. You know, the disciples continue to, to understand that. But you find out by the time uh, of the epistles, the, the early church, that, that this is a strong part of the Christian condition, uh, tradition because of what Christ has instituted. So, when we meet at the Lord's Supper, we're reminded of His command to do this in remembrance of me. So this, this we do this to remember what he's done for us. But uh, also it's, it's a, a proclamation. It, it proclaims uh, uh, Christ's death and, and his resurrection and, and what he has done for us. It, it proclaims the, the forgiveness that he gives to us. It's uh, also a time of fellowship. And, uh, you, you see uh, the gathering together of, of the disciples here. And uh, uh, Jesus joining with them. Uh, you, know, you see the, the Lord's Supper paintings. And, 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 and you understand that the, they, they have gathered together for this meal. And, and same in Jewish tradition as they enjoy Passover at that time. It's a time of fellowship where they gather family, uh, friends together and, and enjoy that. But uh, when we get to 1 Corinthians, we find a very important part that Paul uh, pays attention to here is self-examination. Where we, where we evaluate how are we doing? Uh, what, where are we at and, and, and uh, what's going on in our life right now? See, in, in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, uh, Paul, at the, the top of that chapter, you, you see his directions. Be imitators of me, just as I also am of Christ. Well, Paul, make it easy on us, right? All we have to do is be Christ-like. That's easy enough. Uh, Paul recognizes his own struggles and, and, and not the easiest thing to do. But uh, that's as we're called to follow Christ. We're called to be Christ-like or to be uh, in His image just as we were created to be. So going back to, to, to the very beginning for that. But uh, unfortunately because of sin or, we're separated or uh, broken in that relationship with, us, with Him but now because of Christ, he's talked to here the church, we have received forgiveness from him. Uh, we've been delivered from that. And now this celebration this reminds us of what Christ has done for us and reminds us that we should pay attention then to where we're at and what's going on. Jesus' simple statement, he said, I... Uh, Back in, in Matthew, he said, I, I tell you the truth, uh, one of you will betray me. And, uh, made all the disciples feel uneasy as they, they tried to figure it out. And, and, and they, they tried to think, uh, surely not I, they, they each would say that. Paul here taught that, that not only the disciples, but all Christians must examine themselves and pay attention to, to where we're at. Now, he, he warned that, uh, that uh, those who didn't ask, surely not I, Lord. Uh, then you're, you're eating judgment upon yourself. When you, when you, when you fail to evaluate, when you, when you fail to, to, to uh, do a, a self-examination to, to consider where you're at, then you're in danger of eating the cup in an unworthy manner. Why? Because it is significant in that it remembers what Christ has done for us. Christ didn't flippantly pay our bill. He, he couldn't just unroll a, a, a lot of money or back then throw the golden coins and say, okay, I want to take care of this sin debt that people have. 
in order for him to take care of that debt, Christ had to give his own life. After living a, 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 a sinless and, and, and sacrificial life, and, and, and you know it, it, it's not an easy thing to do. I, I have people tell me, said, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be nice. I'm, I, I'm trying to live the way I'm supposed to do, but, but he just deserved it, and I backed up, and I let him have it. Hopefully we don't stoop to that, but boy, sometimes you just want to do the crap. Well, Christ uh, was able to uh, uh, set the Pharisees straight several times or, or leave them speechless or, or leave them mad, but he did so in a manner uh, as he lived a life without sin. Well, we're unable to do that. Sin has entered the picture. Sin has ruined what would be the relationship that we have with Christ, but or with God. But but Christ redeemed that relationship by giving Himself for us. So this is a time then of paying attention to how much He paid for us, what He did for us, how much He gave of Himself, what He was willing to go through for us. And then examine where we are today. And, and are we appreciating what he did for us? Are, are, are we living like we really care that Christ loved us enough to suffer an agonizing death and die for us? What difference does it make? It, maybe you, you've heard of those who, who served with somebody in war and, and, and they had a part of protecting their life and, and, and until they, they take their dying breath they, they, with admiration and and with thoughts of thankfulness in their heart, they care for that person who gave so much to protect them. Think of what Christ has done as he's protected us. Uh, what, what should that do? How does that affect the way we live day by day? What difference does it make? Meditation, uh, thinking before the communion, very powerful reminder. Uh, uh, a wholesome element to examining our, our what, what Christ has done for us, but also what we are doing with Him, how our relationship uh, with Him is, is progressing and how we're growing in Him. So in, in 1 Corinthians, he, he says, uh, let us, let us uh, recognize and, and examine uh, ourselves so that we would not be condemned. Now, I know of a, a person who refused to, to participate in the Lord's Supper again and again because it felt unworthy. How do we become worthy as a follower of Christ? How, how can we be worthy of, of celebrating what Christ has done for us? Uh, it's only by His grace. There is nothing that, that, that we can do that, that makes us worthy of being able to deserve participating in this meal, let alone receiving His grace. But we can't earn it. Uh, we can't work for it. We uh, we can't sing good enough for it. Uh, there's nothing we can give that we deserve. It's only by accepting what Christ has done. So we're just called to faithfully examine ourselves in light of this unworthiness and recognize uh, we're not condemned. We're forgiven. We're forgiven. See, see, Christ did all this not so that we would feel horrible for, for, for what he went through for us, but that we would feel relieved that this weight of sin and the destruction that we deserve has been removed from us. And so therefore, it's a time of celebration. It's also a, a time of thanksgiving, of, of thankfulness. Thankful for, for what Christ has done for us, but thankful also for what it's done for us as, as it transforms us into the person that can have a relationship with God and can celebrate life and, and give thanks and go to Him. And maybe you've heard this referred to as the, the Eucharist. You go to another uh, uh, denomination of other, other churches. Uh, uh, but uh, and, and that is what that word means. It's simply the Greek word for, for giving thanks. It's a time for giving thanks. So this morning, you examine your hearts, but also thank the Lord. Be thankful for, for what He has done for us. Be thankful for what He has done for you personally. The Lord's Supper speaks graphically of the good news of salvation. 
It, it, it demonstrates this, the, the forgiveness from sin for, for which we give them. You see, that we share in, in baptism that, that, that baptism demonstrates that, that forgiveness, how, how, how we, we, we are, are, are living life and, and, and we're dead in our sin, yet we were buried and we're raised in the newness of life and sin free because of what God has done for us, the grace that he has given to us. In the same way here, we're illustrating what Christ's blood has done for us of his body given to us, why that allows us to have a new hope that is in us. And then uh, the last thing here that, uh, before we take a moment is the element of expectation. See, there's, this is not just for today. It's, as we remember what Christ has done, we, we also look back and, and see as he as they did this originally, the, the beauty that, that Christ has looked forward. And from the, from the very beginning of, of this, he shares with them that, 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 that this is coming at a time when, when all they see is the closing and, and the end. And, and, and it just... Let me turn to it here. Uh, it looks to... To his time, his ministry on earth coming to a close and, and, and all this. But yet Christ is looking beyond that. You go back to, to Luke chapter 22. This is, is, is just a, a separation between his ministry on earth and the future. Because as Christ sees it, this is, this is the beginning of of getting ready for the return. Matter of fact, back in, in chapter 21 there, he, he shares of, uh, of the return and, 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 and what's going to happen. And, and, and uh, verse 34 says, Be on guard then, so that your hearts will not be weighed down with, with dissipation or drunkenness or the worries of life, and, and that they will not come up on you suddenly like a trap. So then verse 36, but keep on the alert at all times, praying that you might have strength to escape all these things that are about to take place and to stand before the Son of Man. So he's been teaching and, and sharing that, that Christ is going to come again. And now he tells us to, to uh, take the, the, the supper and, and to pro proclaiming his death until he comes again. So it has the forward element there that we we're looking forward to. To do this in remembrance of him, but to do it also with the expectation that he's coming again. That, that he's coming in. Verse 16 there, chapter 22. He says, For I say to you, I shall never eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. See? And then he says that, he repeats that again, verse 18, and then middle there it says, I will not drink the fruit of the vine from now on until the kingdom of God comes. This is forward look. Recognize that the way things are today, fortunately, is not the way always and things will always be. Amen? <laughs> kind of tired of this. Anybody ready to be done with this year? 2020 hasn't been the best. Well, life on this earth it's not always going to be like this. Pretty soon, the Lord's going to say, enough is enough, and come back, and, 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 and with that shout, and uh, heaven's open up, and, and the Lord's going to call us home. So there's, there's always a note of expectation in, in the Lord's Supper. Jesus refers to the fact that he's not going to drink this uh, fruit of the vine until he drinks it anew in the kingdom. See, the crucifixion is about to happen. But don't worry, because that's just the beginning. The Lord's Supper is temporary in that He will return and will come back and will celebrate it again. See, Revelation chapter 22, verse 20, even so come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus. By our participation in the Lord's Supper, and we're, we're proclaiming Christ's death, and we do this until he returns. 
So the heavens will roll back as the scroll of the Lord will descend over the child with the trumpet of God and, and the voice of the archangel and, and with the apostle John. And, and we will look forward and say, even so come, Lord Jesus. This is a time to just thank the Lord for what he's done for us. For how much he loves us. And, and I invite you to consider that as we prepare for it. We're going to have Rachel come in just a minute. And we're going to sing a, a closing invitation. But uh, uh, then, then we'll take the Lord's Supper. And, and uh, as, as we do that, just invite you to, to reflect upon what Christ has done for us. And how he has uh, uh, loved and, and blessed and provided for us. Let's go to the Lord. Our Heavenly Father. Lord, it's, it's with sadness that, that we recognize that, that we need it. salvation that required crucifixion and your death for us. Lord, thank you, though, for being with us. And Lord, with that in mind, we accept your grace, your mercy, and your forgiveness because you paid the price for us. Lord, help us to be able to enjoy celebrating life with you by the grace and forgiveness that you give us. Lord, it's wonderful to be a part of your family. Lord, this communion as we celebrate together, Lord, thank you for restoring that relationship that was working. Lord, we also look forward to what you would have us do in life with you. Lord, as, as we examine our hearts and and recognize that there are some things there that, that we don't want to see in the future. Lord, help us to see your transformation. We thank you for your grace, but Lord, we also thank you for the guidance of, of the Holy Spirit and, and your Holy Word that, that, that helps us transform our lives to become the person that you want us to be. Lord, we dedicate this time. to evaluate our relationship to thanking you for what you've done for us. We're looking forward to all that you have for us. Lord, thank you. In Jesus Christ's name. I invite you this morning, maybe maybe you're like me, to uh, understand, hey, uh, but I, I haven't fulfilled that. I haven't accepted I haven't received what Christ has, has given to me. I, I, what he's given to us. I invite you this morning to, to uh, see that we're going to sing the hymn. It's uh, hymn number 604. I invite you to stand. Uh, come on, Christians, speak to me. I invite you to come as, as we see. Thank you. 